Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with Extra Gent Sense. How you doing? Hope that you're doing well. I almost said Gent Sense, but I forgot it's the Extra Channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a fragrance from Zerzhov. The name of the fragrance is Starlight. This one I bought from fragrancebuy.ca when they were having one of their sales. I think it was the Canada Day sale. They had it up there for like low hundred dollars, like hundred and 15, I don't remember, it was something around there. It's a fragrance that I wanted for a bit because I had a sample of it. I ran through the sample, I wanted to get a bottle and when I saw it up there for a good price, I bought it. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the presentation of the fragrance. I'll break it down for you, let you know what it smells like and let you know why I love it so dang much. So let's check it out, Zerzhov Starlight. Now, if you wanted to, you could get this fragrance at retail from twistedlily.com. Well, technically 10% off if you use the code GENTS10. You see what I did there? GENTS10, 10% off twistedlily.com. We got a bunch of Zerzhovs on there. Also, Joma Shop has a whole lot of uh, Zerzhov fragrances nowadays. Some of them from crazy, really good prices. Really, really, really cheap. If you use the code GENTS8, you'll save $8 off any order over 110 bucks at Joma Shop. I'm actually probably gonna place an order there pretty soon for some of those Zerzhovs. First, off, let's check out the presentation. And nobody can ever tell you that Zerzhov does not give you enough boxes. So if anybody ever says that, you look them right in the eye, you smack them in the mouth and you say, man, Zerzhov has got my box addiction under control. What am I talking about? Well, pretty much any Zerzhov that I've ever bought comes with a box and then inside that box is another box with the slip cover on it. And inside that box is another box. And inside that box is a, a little piece of cloth that goes over top your bottle. Let's take a look, shall we? So here's how it's gonna come. This is what you're gonna see when you first get your fragrance in. Well, actually you're gonna have a shipping box and then this box, oh, never mind. So on the outside here, it has the name of the fragrance, the name of the house and the size of the fragrance. And you're gonna open this box up and there will be something inside there, which you guessed it is uh, the box with the slip cover. So here you have the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, and then the size right down there at the bottom. Same thing on the back, little Zerzhov logo up top. And then on the bottom here, if I can get it facing the right way, you have your ingredient information. And then the badge code down here, 03422N. So you take the slip cover off, and then you have a box that says Zerzhov, 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 just in case you forgot. Zerzhov logo up top and at the bottom. You open this box up, okay? And then you have the real box. So these are all the imposter boxes. These aren't the real deal. This is the real deal. This one's hefty, has this nice kind of leatherette feel to it. You got the name of the house right on the front here, Zerzhov, you got the big X right here on the top. That's that's pretty much it as far as how it looks here on the outside. Real uh, soft on the top there, really high quality. Open it up, get another X right here. And a little plaque, I'll go ahead and read what it says to you guys. Zerzhov, it's just a little star that falls from the sky, made in Italy. And then you have that nice sort of velvety cloth. You open that up oh, and your bottle sits right there. So they spare no expense when it comes to the boxes. Uh, that will house their fragrances. And the bottle is pretty nice too. So this one has a whole bunch of little X's all over the bottle. X gun give it to you, just all over this thing. You have a plaque right there on the front, once again with the Zerzhov X, starlight down at the bottom. It says Zerzhov on the cap. And then on the bottom of the bottle, you have a little sticker, your batch code. You have an X on top of the atomizer. And I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys as always. So here we go. One, two. Nice atomizer. And the quality of this fragrance is really good as well. The note breakdown is actually really simple. And these fragrances a lot of times, not always obviously, but a lot of times will have very complex note breakdown where they really wanna give it all to you, really paint the entirety of the picture for you and give you 25 some odd notes. Sometimes though, maybe that's a little overkill and people don't really care to, to have that that overload of information. With this fragrance, it's really simple. In the opening, cardamom and bergamot. That's it. As it dries down, you get cinnamon, almond, and cloves, along with amber and cedar in the base. When you first spray this on, it is one of the best smelling cardamom notes I have ever smelled 
period. It smells absolutely fantastic. It's the entire reason that I really got drawn to the fragrance that I ran through the sample so fast, and I did. The cardamom sparkles, it's fresh, but at the same time, it does have a little bit of that, you know, that warm, spicy leaning to it. So it's sort of in between. It's not full on syrupy sweet in the opening. And the name Starlight does make sense in, in the sense that the fragrance has this effervescence to it, this sparkle, this, this liveliness to it even though the note breakdown would have you think it's gonna be pretty heavy off the top, but it isn't. It's green, fresh, spicy, sweet, all this at the same time, and it smells so good. Like I said before, I'm kind of harping on it, but it really does. I absolutely fell in love with the opening. It has this, this mass appeal to it, where you can easily pull this off and people are gonna think it smells absolutely amazing. But at the same time, it is noticeably higher quality than any kind of cardamom that you're gonna be able to pick up from a designer fragrance. It's heads and tails above it. Sometimes you have niche fragrances that have designer sensibilities in the sense that they're very easy to wear and they have mass appeal and compliment factor and all that. And you could kind of say, yeah, it's you know designer-ish, but a little higher quality, but it's not this, enormous leap between the two. The way the cardamom comes across here, at least for me, there's a big difference between how it comes across here and a designer fragrance. And I hate to throw it out there because it's just, you know, reaching for the lowest rung on the ladder, but La Nuit de Lome, the cardamom in there is, is probably the most well-known in the designer realm. And if you compare that to this side by side, it gets annihilated in the water. Now I'm talking just specifically there about the quality of the cardamom. Not the fragrances themselves, La Nuit de Lome is a, a modern classic. So yeah, the cardamom is what makes the opening here. The bergamot helps, it lends a little bit of that freshness that, that keeps that liveliness, that that poppiness in the opening going, but the, the focal point is the cardamom. So straight up, the cardamom will make or break this one for you. As it dries down, you get more cinnamon that comes out. You can pick it up initially, but the cardamom is, is way above the cinnamon as far as how you're gonna perceive it. As it dries down, the cinnamon comes out a little bit more, and it's a, it's a sweet cinnamon. It's a sweet, spicy cinnamon, and uh, I would say that the cinnamon is actually sweeter than the cardamom here. The almond is gonna give you this, this creaminess, so this, this almost slight tinge, very slight uh, green creaminess is what the almond is gonna impart into the fragrance. As it dries down further, the spices stay there. They retain the entire way through. So that cardamom, that cinnamon, it's still gonna be there. Maybe it steps back a little bit as the fragrance dries, which you would expect, but it still stays there and it's still easily picked up. The amber in the base is gonna play right into the strengths of those spices, of the cinnamon, of the cardamom, giving you additional warmth and helping with that sweetness, helping carry that on. The cedar gives it a little bit of a backbone so that the fragrance doesn't go too far down that sweet side of things. I, I talked earlier a little bit about it not coming across syrupy and the cedar helps kind of keep it reined in. So even though the note breakdown is very simplistic, the fragrance itself is an absolute dream for somebody who likes fragrances that are warm and fresh at the same time, uh, spicy and sweet, and that pack a punch. So performance, this thing pushes when you first spray it on. Couple sprays and you can pick it up easily. People across the room are gonna be able to pick it up. It projects like a beast and it lasts for hours and hours and hours. So if you go heavy with this one, this is gonna be one of those fragrances that even though everything is balanced out pretty well to my nose or to my, to my tastes, if you go too heavy, it is one of those fragrances where maybe that, that sweetness, it goes too far at that point if you go too heavy. With this one, I spray myself maybe four times and that works really well. Four sprays with this one seems to be the sweet spot. Maybe if it was really cold outside, go a little bit heavier. I'm kind of like meandering around a little bit, but I'm just trying to tell you performance wise, it's a beast. It's one of those fragrances you could comfortably call beast mode. So take that for what it is. If you're the type of person that loves wearing beast mode fragrances and you spray it on heavily, then knock yourself out. But be aware that maybe if you go too far, as I was kind of talking about just a moment ago, that spice and that sweetness maybe starts to come across uh, a little bit too aggressive, a little bit overwhelming, and just to my personal taste, I think it smells nicer 
if you rein in the sprays a little bit because then you keep catching these absolutely fantastic smelling wafts of the fragrance throughout the day, all day long, and people are gonna be able to pick that up as well. This is one of those ones I think uh, if you don't go heavy handed, it actually serves the fragrance better, makes it smell better. In terms of uh, whether this is a masculine leaning or feminine leaning fragrance, I'd say it's unisex. Anybody can pull it off. But if I were gonna say it leans one way or the other, it leans a little bit masculine. And in terms of seasons, in case it wasn't obvious already, I'm more of a fall and winter time fragrance, definitely not something that I wanna wear out and about in summer, even though I have been wearing it this summer. To be fair, I've been wearing it when I knew it was gonna be indoors uh, with air conditioning. Outside, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, really high humidity. I think you should probably go with something else. But where this fragrance does have that mass appeal, it does have that versatility, I think you can pull this off during the spring also, but I would lean more toward early spring as you're transitioning out of winter time. And as far as daytime or nighttime use, either one. I don't think it leans too far one way or the other. I know the fragrance is called Starlight, so you would think that that would make it more of an evening time fragrance, but really either one, day or night. This fragrance has catapulted right up toward the very top of my Zershoff collection. I don't know if it's my absolute favorite, but I think it's probably top three. So that's saying something. This is really, really nice stuff. Little bit goes a long way. Presentation looks fantastic. And if you love cardamom, you gotta smell it. If you have smelled this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I'll link it in the description also. Thank you guys for hanging with me here today. Stay safe out there. I'll see you again with another fragrance video another day. See you later.